Hi, everyone, and good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Melissa Mati, the Agriculture and Natural Resources Agent uh, with UGA Cooperative Extension in Fulton County. And I decided to talk about stinging insects specifically in Georgia today because I'm sure we've all heard the buzz in the news. Uh, there's a lot of interest about these ladies, especially the flying variety. So we're just gonna go through a couple uh, main species that you will likely see as we picnic through the summer. First up and probably most well known are the yellow jackets, uh, species Vespula squamosa. They are social and very, very common, very cosmopolitan. Um, they're very easily found throughout the state and throughout the East Coast, specifically the Eastern yellow jacket. Um, so they live in colonies typically underground, but I do have an example here. Sometimes they will um, make their paper nests in hay barns or some other different media, but they will always be buried in something. They're not like other hornets and wasps that they'll make their nests in trees. They're typically going to be at ground level. Um, so be careful if you're mowing your lawn, especially on a hill. Uh, they really, really love to nest in hills. They're going to be typically black and yellow. And if you look at the thorax or what would be kind of their shoulders, right? But right below the head, you'll see that they have two yellow vertical lines extending from the head backwards. That is a pretty defining character of these ladies. Uh, so we know they're yellow jackets and not something else like a European paper wasp. Their queens are very large and very orange and can easily be mistaken for larger hornet or wasp species. Uh, but I do have a good picture of that in the upper right hand corner. That is uh, that orange abdomen is very typical of the queen, whereas the yellow and black stripes are going to be more of a worker color scheme. They do have a pretty painful sting, um, but swelling will typically go down within 15 minutes. And um, you will likely start seeing these soon if you haven't seen them already. So up next, we will have the bald-faced hornet. Now this name is kind of misleading. Obviously the bald face because they have a, a nice bright white face, but they are not a true hornet. Uh, it is in the genus Dolica vespula and only um, true vespids are actually hornets. So a little bit of a misnomer, but we'll, it's, it's the common name, it's accepted, uh, so it's kind of hard to fight. But they are a type of um, wasp that will build paper nests, and they're going to tend to favor trees, eaves, things like that, um, long extended branches or beams that they can attach a nest to. Um, they have a unique black and white coloration. They are very, very pale. And you can tell that this is a bald-faced hornet because on the abdomen, so on the very, very back end, kind of the business end of these wasps, where, they, uh, where their stinger is, are three white stripes. Now I have seen kind of a yellowish morph of this, but you're never gonna see them any darker than a pale yellow. Um, they are also social, so they have a queen. Their workers are going to have small hairs all over their bodies and their queens are hairless. And the hairs are really important because the workers are the ones that are going out and scavenging for food. Um, they like to eat pollen and drink nectar and they'll visit flowers. Um, so these actually are pretty good pollinators as well. And you'll see that in a lot of wasp species, even though we're, we're pretty scared of them and uh, they, they can look pretty, pretty fearsome, um, they are very important to our ecosystems. Okay, and then next, we have the European hornet. Now this lady is a true hornet. In fact, Vespa crabro is the only true hornet to actually colonize the United States. They came over, uh, I believe the earliest notation of them is in the 1840s. They came over on some European ships. They are also social, so they also have queens, and they will aggressively defend their nest but the individuals themselves are not very aggressive. You will see them flying around. I've started to see them already around my porch garden. They're kind of investigating the flowers, um, looking for things to eat, but they're not aggressive at all. Um, they do have a pretty painful sting, um, but not anything to, to really be concerned about. And one thing that really sets apart these true hornets um, is the C shape in their eyes. Now, I, I'm sure you're all looking at their face thinking, when am I ever going to get that close to these hornets? 
Um, but I think because hornets are in the news and there are so many other wasps that look like them, um, it's good to just have a basic understanding of, of what we as entomologists are going to look for if you bring us a species um, for us to identify. They are also pretty hairy, so they can also be good, good pollinators as well. So even though they're not technically native, they are pretty naturalized. Um, they are going to tend to nest in uh, tree stumps, attics, things uh, where structures are already available. They don't like to construct too much of their nests by themselves. Um, but again, not super aggressive on their own. And again, in the lower left, um, you can actually see uh, a yellow jacket versus uh, the, the European hornet. They're very, very large, very large. Um, so I've gotten a lot of these samples to identify. Up next, we are going to have the true paper wasps. Now, a lot of our wasps are going to build paper nests, but there is only one true paper wasp group, and it's kind of a catch-all. This is the genus Polistes, and they all have very, very pointed heads. And again, I hear you thinking, when am I ever going to look that closely at them? Um, but they're not that aggressive at all. I have flat out bumped up against a nest and it has taken them a minute or two to actually notice. Uh, they do notice, so do be careful, um, but they are not nearly as aggressive as European hornets or yellow jackets. Um, they have a very, very slender waist and very long legs compared to other wasps. Uh, they also have a lot of different color variations in this genus. So they can be red with black wings, they can be kind of a, a maroon with a gold stripe like you see in the upper right, they can be mostly yellow. Uh, they, they do have a lot of varieties and they can actually be pretty, pretty charismatic little ladies. Um, they make their nests primarily in an umbrella shape. So what will happen is the queen will emerge and she will find a suitable place where her nest can hang. She will make the first couple of cells, lay her eggs, they will hatch, and then these wasps, uh, when they mature, they will help her continue to build the nest and care for the young. And then up next, we have cicada killers. You will not be seeing these right now. Um, and their name is a little bit more <laughs> fearsome than their actual um, personalities. They are large digger wasps, so they love to dig holes and make their nest in freshly disturbed earth. They are seldom going to sting humans. Um, you will often see them when they first emerge in large groups, um, but you can walk through an entire cloud of these and they will not bother you. They are much more concerned with finding food, finding a mate, and making their nests. So as their name implies, they do specialize on cicadas. They will sting them, which paralyzes the cicada, and then they will drag them back to their nests. That's why we don't see too many of them now, but when you hear the cicadas start to sing, expect to see uh, these wasps come out. And again, they are solitary, though you do see a lot of them together. So next, we have honeybees. Honeybees are pretty straightforward. I think we're all familiar with, with Aphis mellifera. Um, they can only sting you once, unlike everyone else we're talking about in this presentation who can sting you multiple times. They do have pollen baskets on their hind legs. That's what makes them such great pollinators. And they do have more hair on their thorax than their abdomen. Again, this really helps with pollination. They are social. They live in hives with a single queen. The queen is much larger than the rest of the workers. Um, she has a very conical, elongated abdomen. And it can be kind of hard to tell, but if you look at the frame of a hive, you will actually be able to see where the queen is because the worker bees are going to form a ro what we call a rosette around her. Wherever she goes, they turn to face her because after all, she is royalty. Next, we have some native bees. We have bumble and carpenter bees. I lump these together because they're so similar. Um, so the bumblebee is very, very fuzzy. And the carpenter bee is a little bit fuzzy, but as you can see in the lower left corner, the abdomen is very shiny. It does not have as much hair. Both of these can sting repeatedly, but they do seldom sting unless they feel very, very threatened. Uh, bumblebees are gonna have hair all over their body, like I said, and there's a lot of color variation as far as how the yellow and black stripes are placed. If there's a white patch, if there's an orange patch, we have about 13 different species of bumbles specifically in Georgia. Um, but again, the carpenter bees are going to have that naked, shiny abdomen. 
though both are primarily going to be yellow. Carpenter bees, as their name implies, do bore into wood, so they can be a pest, but bumblebees make more of um, a, a ground dwelling nest that you can see here in little cells. Sometimes it'll actually look like a fungus, uh, but they are just little um, balls of wax where they raise their young. Next, we have some mimics. So in addition to these flying stinging creatures, uh, there are things that take advantage of their reputation and try to mimic them. Um, so we have a hoverfly here. It is a type of fly, very important beneficial insect and pollinator, very similar to wasps, but instead it will actually hover in place as opposed to kind of lilting around like the wasps do. The grape root borer is a great example of a moth that mimics that wasp coloration, just like those uh, polistes or paper wasp we talked about. And so is the mantid fly, which is actually, a it's closely related to lace wings. Um, it's not a mantis and it's not a fly. Um, but again, it has that coloration that makes it look very wasp-like. And then finally, we have the one stinging insect that is not in Georgia, but it certainly is in the news. We have the Asian giant hornet. So all of this hype is basically uh, due to two sightings at the end of 2019 in Washington state. It has not been recorded anywhere else and it does not seem to have spread according to experts. Uh, but this is a true hornet, just like uh, the European hornet. The venom on the Schmidt pain index, which is kind of a scale of how painful and venomous insects are, um, it's about as painful as a yellow jacket, according to those that have been stung. The main, so the main danger here is not really to humans, it's to bees. They will um, attack and seek, seek out and attack hives by decapitating the bees themselves and feeding on the thorax and the muscles within. Um, so again, these sightings were in late 2019. There hasn't really been any activity with them this year at all. Um, they are brown and orange and have a yellow striped abdomen. They are larger than any wasps that we have here, um, but they do have a very, very orange head. So they are very, very distinctive. If you are worried about it, invasive species are something that we are constantly on the lookout for. This one does not seem to be a threat to our area, but there are several that are, and we have a lot of good specialists who are always looking for concerned citizens like yourself to help us monitor them. So if you're concerned about Asian giant hornets, um, I encourage you to kind of redirect that interest to uh, current invasive species that are issues. And with that, I am done. So thank y'all, that's my information. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any other questions.